With a capable squad of players, expectations have been higher than for some time. But the team has yet to click with the consistency expected. With the Christmas programme just a few days away, we caught up with Tommy Ridrington at the prestigious Borough Means Business Christmas Lunch for his half-term report and a look at the Boxing Day home match against Whitehawk. Thanks for taking some time out from the BMB lunch, Tommy, um, and joining us for today. Uh, it's unbelievable we're at the Christmas and New Year stage of the season already, um, and we've seen some top quality performances, such as against Hemel Hempstead and Ebbsfleet, um, but there have also been some performances where you probably bashed your head against a brick wall after. Um, so overall, how would you characterise the season so far for the sports? Um, what well, to get to Christmas and having not played uh, the half, halfway point yet in the league is uh, a little strange and uh, ultimately Christmas itself isn't as busy as it has been in other years but uh, with Christmas falling at the weekend it's probably a little bit of respite. We've had, a, we've had a lot of knocks and niggles and issues as to why people couldn't play over the last few weeks and um, I think that's sort of been the little, the little halt in our momentum a little bit if you like but um, in general I think the way we've tried to play the, the game, particularly at home, um, it's been entertaining, it's been fast, it's been goal scoring and there's only five games out of I think 29 altogether that we haven't scored a goal in um, and two of them we didn't lose. So for, for that point of view, I mean, <clears throat> last season I remember sitting here and saying, oh, what do you think we need to add? I think we need to add more goals and we've added more goals but we've actually conceded more than what we did this time last year. So it's getting the, getting the swings and roundabouts about right and uh, like you said, on occasions I think we've got it spot on and on other occasions we haven't and I think that that's a reflection of the level. I think it's a reflection of the, the group of players who've been charged with the last few games. And that's not being detrimental to them, lads. But if you look when Lewis has been missing, Gav McCallum's been missing, uh, on occasions Ian's been missing, you know, Brian Dutton's been missing. These are guys who are, what I would say, the probably spine of the side. You know, in, in, I don't care which team you play for, which team you manage. Um, if the spine of anything's taken out, it's difficult for the rest of it to stand at all. So, um, yeah, we, we've missed one or two, but... You know, it is a squad game and I think where we are at this moment in time as a football club, which is halfway up the league, we did get to the first round of the FA Cup and I think people forget that too quickly. Um, but, you know, we're not a million miles away from where we, we should be. I mean, you're certainly right. You've pulled together a really competent squad of players and it blends youth experience, abilities and skills. And the fans have actually, I think, responded very well to that squad. Um, but how close do you feel you are from that explosive blend, if I can put it like that, uh, which includes some consistency and uh, momentum behind it? Well, consistency is the element every manager looks for. I think the only team this year, really, who's been totally consistent are the teams sitting at the top of the league. And I think that started with the way their striker started top he's started scoring goals very very early on and he hasn't stopped if you look at anybody else who um, had great starters individuals or, or teams none of them have had that consistency so I mean the level that we're playing at is is indicative of that as you know it's probably why most of the players are playing at the level so um, like I said it doesn't surprise me that there is a little bit of inconsistency again I always look at the age and the and the experience of the, the lads actually playing in the game in the games and um, like I said, of, of recent times, there's been a little bit more on the, on the younger side with, with one or two of the, the older heads missing. But, you know, I think there's been some great, some huge positives. Again, strikers have been scoring goals, both Nat and um, Elliot Remain are into double figures. You know, Mark Hughes has chipped in with five, and I think Mark's been an excellent addition to the, the club. He's been somebody who, I think, when you pick him, it's one of them guys that does exactly what it says on the tin. You know, he's been around the block a bit. He, he's a passionate lad. Um, so there's been many positives. You know, people like Josh Hare are, are making their way in the game. This is the longest spell he's ever had in a first team game. So Charlie Horlock taking his chance. So, you know, there are, there are many positives. But um, ultimately, everybody wants to, to win every game, as I do, uh, and as the players do. But, uh, you know, rest assured, when we roll up on Boxing Day, we will be trying our utmost also. Yes, moving back to the uh, first team, Gavin McCallum's had that bad injury, which has put him out for another month or two. Mm. Um, I just wonder how his treatment's going. Well, he's responded ever so well. I mean, he's had to have a, 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 a big operation. He's, 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 his elbow, for want of a better expression, was shattered, you know. And it was strange. Everybody thought he did it on the ground, but he actually collided with the goalkeeper's hip. And it sort of... 
if you looked at the x-ray, it just looked like a broken saucer. That's what it looked like. So it was a big job, a bigger job than the surgeon first thought. He had a two-hour operation. But like I said, he's responded very well. I think Gavin's a great example of somebody who might frustrate people at times, but we've missed his consistency. And I think, you know, the, the versatility that he's brought to us, he can play, or he has played, down the left side as a fullback, as a wing-back, and as a winger. And he's also played as a striker. But again, his, his consistency, as much as he frustrates sometimes, he's... Uh, We've missed him without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, and uh, moving on from, from Gavin, Charlie Horlock's been given a great opportunity, a big opportunity, um, and it is a big responsibility for a young goalie. Uh, how's he responding to that responsibility? Well, we think he's, he's responded very, very well. Um, the situation is such that it's a private matter between Lewis and, and his himself there's no, there's no issues just let me put one thing here there's no issue between Lewis and the football club there's no issue between Lewis and me but some things need to kept, be kept private and I think he, he, I, I respect that decision um, but there will you know there, there, there will be one thing happen one way or the other very very soon uh, but Lewis and I are very happy with the arrangement we have at, at, at this moment in time and I got to say Charlie was told he would get get 10 games and he's had I think seven or eight and I can't remember him really letting us down that much you know he's he isn't Lewis but then he accepts that you know he came here to push Lewis for the first team spot but I, 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 belie I believed in Lewis when he was 20 and I believe in Charlie now he's 20 so with a 20-year-old goalkeeper, you don't get um, the experience and the maturity that you, you do with a 28 or a 30-year-old. But then we didn't have that anyway. So Lewis, Lewis earned his stripes, and I think Charlie's earning his. He's, he's, he's um, gleaned the attention of more than one club in our league, and now that and, and above. So, um, again, it's another positive for us. And a, and a great lad to boot. He was very patient, waiting for his opportunity. And... People who know me as a manager knows I don't chop and change my goalkeepers that often. So for, to give him the chance, I must have had enough confidence in him to think he could do the job. And, and thankfully, I think he's, he's, he's proven us all right. Yeah, he's put in some great performances. Um, and it's, it's a shame that sometimes there's been a little bit of uh, a weakness, if I can put it like that, mm. um, in that last part of the field before he has to come into action. Well, possibly. I mean, like I said, I think we've conceded too many goals this season, but that's usually not just the goalkeeper's fault. And in our case, it certainly isn't. Um, we, we've shipped too many goals. But when you're playing opening attack in football and you're scoring at that end, as is often the case, you, you just hope to outscore the opposition. And uh, on many occasions we have, but on the few that we haven't, it's, uh, it's frustrating. But um, that's part and parcel of football, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's always better to score more than yeah. they go against. Turning to Boxing Day's match, Tommy, uh, we have local rivals Whitehawk from along the coast coming down here. Um, and then we visit them on New Year's Day. It's always a bit of a buzz when it's Whitehawk. Um, so what sort of games are you expecting this time round? Always expect them to be tough games. I think they've got a decent squad of players down there, albeit it's, there's been all change over the last sort of 12 to 18 months. Um, but that's their business, you know, and... Uh, they, they're going on, they've had a little bit of a, a sort of rocky rocky spell themselves after not such a great start, then they went on a very good run. Um, but it's a local derby, I think, you know, everybody will be up for that. Um, hopefully there'll be a good crowd and the weather will not be like we're sitting watching this afternoon. Um, but they, I think they're a good side that's got some really good individuals and put together, obviously it makes them a decent side and I'm sure they'll think the same as us. I like the banter that goes on between our fans and theirs. I think it's great great for the for the game and I don't mind being part of the, the butt of some of them jokes, that's okay. And hopefully we'll have the last laugh, at least in one of the games, but uh, hopefully in both of them. But uh, it'd be nice to see them twice over the, over the festive period. There's a, there's a lot of players there who I've either worked with before or I know through the game and so when all when all's said and done, hopefully we can shake hands and wish each other the best of luck for 2017, but not until about five o'clock on the first. <laughs> Having lost a bit of ground recently uh, with, with the top of the table, are you more concerned with the style and attitude or three points at any cost? I mean, it's strange. You know, people ask me, you know, what's my philosophy and this, that, and you know, that. I want to win football matches, the same as everybody else does, but we also want a certain way of playing the game. I think we've got you know, an identity as a football club now. We're a young, vibrant football club, not just a young, vibrant football team. And I think that gets lost on a lot of people. You know, the, 
the, the, the history of the club is fantastic, but most of it was at a lower level than this. You know, we had two or three seasons out of 50 at one le level up. So let's, let's just sort of hold our horses a little bit and think, you know what, let's look at the future. I always look at the future because that's where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that the future of this football club is bright. I'm sure it is. I think the people who um, I work for are, are good, sound, honest people. And... We work, we work together on everything, and like I said, I, I don't speak sitting here what Tommy Woodrington thinks. I can tell you, you know, I'm speaking for, for Eastbourne Borough Football Club, and as long as we're all pulled in the same direction, nobody's drilling any holes in our boat, we'll be fine. That's great to hear. So will the players be training on Friday and will they be ordered not to overindulge on mince pies and the cooking sherry? <laughs> well, it, it, yes, is the answer to both of them questions. We're in on Thursday and Friday this week. Um, and also the academy boys are training with us, so it'll be a, a good group, and it'll be nice to see them all just before Christmas. But I, you know, I hope they have a. I was, I very rarely got Christmas Day off when I played, but um, I feel obviously with the travel and everything else, the, the lads will be having a, a, a day at home with their families on Christmas. I'm sure they'll all prepare correctly for the game on Boxing Day. So lastly, as it's Christmas and New Year, have you a message for the fans? Well, as always, I wish them all a really, really uh, Merry Christmas and a very happy, new, happy and healthy New Year. Um, and like I said, I'm certainly the one who's looking forward as the manager of the football club. I know the players are all stoked for a good second half of the season. Um, we're still going in, in the Sussex Senior Cup. You know, we want to try and defend that as much as we can. So I uh, just appreciate the support that we have, have had so far. Um, in a long way, continue. And like I said, as long as we all pull in the same direction, we'll get to where we want to go in the end. And we're all behind you, Tommy. Merry Christmas Thank to you, you to the players and the rest of the staff. And uh, fingers crossed for a successful 2017. Thank you, Graham. I'll pass that on to the lads. Thank, Thank you. you. identified this area which was held by the council for playing. Most of these boys sort of joined and that's when we had, to be fair, most of our success. And he's gone like that and there's a chicken foot coming out of his mouth like that. We've just both says we've done it. And I'd love to take the club into that sort of level of, of the game. Yeah.